Okay, so last week we stopped around here. Yeah, last week we were saying that I shall recite for you. Imas mince panveya karanas ming banjamane ayasmato pundanyas virjang vita malang damchapum udapadi. Yang kinci samudaya dhammang sabbantang nirodha dhammandi. So we have said that while the discourse was being spoken, there arose in venerable kondanya, the dust-free, stainless vision of the dhamma. Whatever is subject to origination is subject to cessation. Yeah? So what we are saying here is only venerable kondanya understood. Huh? So the rest of the four did not understand. I think we stopped that last week. Now we are saying that this is not the very easy sutta, though many people say this is the basic. Not the basic. This is the gist of the Buddha's teaching. And having understood this, the Buddha says, when he has understood this in the 12 modes, this is very important we have to remember. Uh, when you have understood this in the 12 modes, that means every truth, every noble truth, you have the knowledge, you must practice and you must realize. And that is the gist of the Buddha's teaching. Not only knowing the Four Noble Truths. And we say this is basic means we know this is Four Noble Truths. That's all. But yeah, we have not penetrated the Four Noble Truths. Uh, and of course, it is not easy to penetrate. And I give example, you know, if we can practice our five precepts. It is actually, it is almost like practicing, it is, it is practicing your eightfold path. Huh? If you analyze your five precepts, precept by precept, you know, you will, that was what we said last week. Huh? Uh, we said that we can, we can. Huh? So now, after the Buddha has told them this, this first uh, discourse of the five very senior monks or five senior ascetics, only Venerable Kondanya understood that a little. Huh? So he, he only Kondanya, the dust free, stainless vision of the Dhamma. He has got the, he, he could see that very clearly. Okay, then he became a Sotapanna. Okay, then after that, what happens? After when he have understood that, and the Buddha knew, what the Buddha knew that the rest did not understand. So the Buddha can, later continued with the Anatta Lakana Sutta, Sutta of non self, that helped to reinforce them. Then that non-self or not self, uh, another lakana sutta, that understanding uh, the not self then reinforces and let them understand what is detachment. It is not easy to understand detachment when we are still sticking to ourselves. We are still sticking to this I, we, mine, yours. This concept is there. We cannot actually realize the four noble truth in the twelfth mode. Yeah, so only when they understood that this is there is no I, there is no self, there is not mind. You know what does the Buddha mean by not mind, not self? Is that nothing is permanent, right? If you can accept impermanence in life, you can let go things. But the thing is, we cannot accept yet. We still have the I with us, the I and the mind and the yours with us. Uh, and that view, and sometimes we still stick to views, and that causes a lot of fighting in the world because of views. Uh, uh. Okay, so when, when, when this was done, what happened next? Okay, sister, can we have the next slide? Okay, what happened next is I shall I shall recite for you again. Deva Satta Manusa Vesum Etang Bhagavata Baranasiyang Isipatane Migadaye Anuttarang Dhamma Chakkang Pavatitang Appativatiyang Samane Nava, Brahmane Nava, Deve Nava, Mare Nava, Brahmuna Vakena Jiva, Lokas Mingti, 
So what he says here is that so when the wheel of the Dhamma, uh, this is called the wheel of the Dhamma, Dhamma Chakka, is wheel of the Dhamma, uh, Chakka is wheel, has been set in motion, it has started. The wheel has set, been set in motion by the Blessed One. Then the earth dwelling devas, when they, 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 this was set in motion, they heard this, they were so happy and they cried out loud at Varanasi in Deer Park. At Isipatane, this unsurpassed wheel of the Dhamma has been set in motion by the Blessed One, which cannot be stopped by any ascetic or Brahmin or Devas or Mara or Brahma or anyone in the world. Huh? So what the Buddha means here is, when he has started this, nobody can stop this, the spread of the Dhamma. Okay? What does the Buddha mean to say the uh, ascetic? Yes, all the ascetics, there are many, many teachers at that point of time. There are 62 of them. Uh, so these ascetics cannot stop this from spreading. Neither can the Brahmin priest. Brahmin here will refer to the Brahmin priest. Neither they also cannot do. Neither can any Deva or even Mara herself cannot stop. Or the Brahma, huh? Brahma, that is from the Brahma world, huh? which is above the Deva world, we will come to that later, cannot stop this wheel from turning. So this, they all raise a cry that Etang Bhagavata Bharanasiyang Isipatande Migadaye Anuttarang Dhamma Chakkang Pavatitang Ap Pativatiyang Samane Nava Brahmane Nava Deve Nava Mare Nava Brahmuna Va Ena Jiva Lokas Mingti. So when they say this, what happens is the next Deva above them. Uh, so, you see, in Buddhism, Buddhism is the only religion that has got so many levels of heaven. Uh, most of the other religions only have got three. You got heaven, hell, and earth. It's easy. Yeah, but, but for us, our heaven itself, <clears throat> we totally we have 31 planes of existence. Okay? Four woeful state. Yeah? And then ours and the Deva realm are called the, 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 the uh, loka, uh, Kama Loka. Huh? Sensual realm, whereby we experience a lot of sensual pleasures and, 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 and sadness and happiness. Then with the Brahma realm, they experience a lot of fine material kind of thing, then Arupa realm. So we have a total of 31 plane of existence. So when, when the Buddha has set this wheel in motion, okay, what is important here is to know is that the four lower realms cannot benefit. Huh? Those who are born at Avicii hell cannot benefit. Those who are born in the animal realm also cannot benefit. And those who are born in the Azura realm also cannot benefit. Those who are in the hungry ghost also cannot benefit. So the four woeful realms cannot benefit in this teaching. That is why later we will realize that when we chant this, we will, this is not mentioned. The four lower realms are not mentioned. Okay, sister has, 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 has shown us what are the 31 planes of existence. Huh? So she has done a very nice kind of chart for us to understand better. Huh? So there are 31 realms of existence in total. That is only in Buddhism. Huh? Others have got heaven, hell and earth only. Huh? Right? But we have got 31 realms. So the unpleasant realm, she called it the woeful realm. Uh, we call it the, 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 the planes of misery or state of loss, the Apaya Bumis. Uh, Apaya Bumis, the four woeful realms. Uh, this, like I've said earlier, the Avicii hell and the animal kingdom and the, and the hungry ghost realm and the Azura realm. Uh, there are two kinds of Azura here also, we can talk later. Uh. Okay, so this is the four realms that will not benefit from the Buddha teaching. So you notice later when we go back to the Dhamma Chakra, we will see that these are not mentioned. Okay. Then we come to the pleasant realm. Now, what are the pleasant realms she has identified for us here? They, they are called the Kama Supati Bhumi, Kama Supati Bhumi, planes of sensual happiness or sensual world. 
Okay, this is our realm here. Okay, we are here. Ah, uh, we are number seven. We are just, we are just above, we are just above this four, this four vocal state. Okay, uh, okay. Then we are called the number five. Okay, number five. We are the human realm. And actually, oh, I, okay, it is categorized as number five, but you know that it is one of the most wonderful realm of Geneva. Huh? To be born a human is very, very, very wonderful. It is very rare to be born a human. Huh? You know the turtle and the yolk story, isn't it? How difficult it is to be born as a human, you know. Huh? So it is very rare, you know. Huh? The Buddha described that to be born as a human realm is very rare. You can, you, oh, the Buddha gave a parable that you got a blind turtle in the middle of the ocean. And the parable is, is how rare it is. You want to know how rare it is? You have a turtle in the middle of the ocean. Okay? Which comes up 100 years, once come up for air. Bubble up, go up, breathe air, and then go down again. 100 years, one time it goes up and breathe and come down. Okay? Once in every 100 years, the turtle go up breathe some fresh air and go down. And you throw a yoke. Huh? Just a yoke means, okay, a rubber tube, let's say, lah, huh? a yoke, and you throw into the sea. The Buddha says, and this turtle, by, by chance, by accident, you know, one in a very few billion chance, isn't it? The turtle goes up and the head exactly enters the yoke. You know? So that is how rare it is to be born a human. Uh, so it is so don't take for granted that to be born a human is very easy. So number five, actually, the Manusa Loka is actually a very fortunate realm. Uh, you know, you must not normally they say that uh, all the Buddhas are born as a human first before they become a Sama Sam Buddha. Correct? But they must experience happiness, they must experience non-happiness, they must experience sadness also. Uh, neutral feeling, happy feeling, and sadness. So with this kind of tree, then only they can realize. Otherwise, they cannot realize. So remember, the human realm is not an easy realm to be reborn in. Huh? So we are we should use this opportunity to practice as much as we can, do good things all the time. That's why we continue until we are we are liberated. Huh? Okay, so above us is called the Chatu Maharajika Deva. This is the realm of the four great kings. These four great kings are protector of the Dhamma. Lah. Huh? You know, okay, we are not going to detail. I don't think we have we will have that time. Huh? The four great kings, you can read about this, lah, but okay, you must remember above us Chatu Maharajika. Then above, so when 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 the when the when the wheel of the Dhamma was set in motion, they were very happy. Yeah? Oh, the Buddha has started this in Varanasi. So they say, Saru, Saru, Saru. Then the one above them now, Chatu Maharajika, they started. And then the Tava Tingsa Heaven also heard. Okay? Tava Tingsa Heaven, the, the God of the retreat, they also heard. Qigong is here. Lah, huh? That we buy by Qigong every Chue Kao for the New Year. is residing in this uh, 33 gods. Right? Tava Tingsa Heaven. Okay? Qigong is here. So he is having also when they heard this one, they also very happy. They also say, Saru, Saru, Saru. Then the Yama Devas also heard. This Yama, okay, come, we come to this 33 first. Now 33 is Qigong is here. Lah. Huh? Qigong is, is born here. And here is where the Buddha actually, in, in, in our story, in, in, in our belief, in our books, in our canon, the Buddha went up to Tabatinsa heaven to teach the Abhidhamma. Okay, so this is the realm that the Buddha went up. Huh? Huh? The Buddha meditated and then he went up to Tavratinsa heaven to teach the Abhidhamma to his mother and to all the devas there. Huh? So this is the, the, the significance of this Tavratinsa. And then the Yama. Yama devas, be careful. Like this Yama is not the Yama from hell. Huh? Huh? The, you know, because in the Chinese, if you read the Chinese scripture a lot, we call it the Yama God, isn't it? Huh? Uh, god of hell. Uh. This is not the god of hell. Uh. This is this is actually the Yama Devas. Uh. Uh, Yama Devas are here. And then above the Yama Devas are the Tusita Devas. Tusita is another very very nice another the, okay, the significance of Tusita realm is that all Buddhas, you know, all Buddhas, all Buddhas must be reborn in Tusita heaven. 
this is the realm, huh? before they are reborn into the human realm again. Okay, so now the next Buddha, they call it the Maitreya Buddha or Maitreya Buddha, is now residing at Tusita, waiting to be reborn as a human when the Dhamma is completely lost. When there's no more Dhamma, when the dark ages come, then he will be reborn. Uh, so at the moment, he's residing here. So this is significant of Tusita. Then you go to the uh, Nimanarati Deva. Uh, this is another place where the Devas, they, they, they like in creating things you know, and all those things. Uh, and then, okay, another significant place is this place. Uh, you'd be surprised here is the highest of the Deva realm. Highest of the Deva realm uh, is called the Paranimitta Vasavati. Okay, that is called Paranimitta Vasavati. And that is where Mara is residing. Okay, so Mara is not a devil. Right? Mara is a very powerful Deva. And she recites he or she, uh, actually, whether it's a he or she, never mind, but okay, mostly we will portray her as a she. Uh. So she lives in this Deva realm, the highest of the Deva realm, uh, Parandimita Vasavati Deva realm. So she's a very powerful Deva, you know. Don't think she is all bad. Uh. She's also a Deva, you know, except that she's full of jealousy and she cannot see the Buddha succeeding. Uh. So that's why she is the main main distraction of the deva of of the Buddha, <clears throat> uh, but she is a very powerful deva here. Uh, so she has she is residing in the highest of the deva plane. Deva plane there are six now. Remember six deva plane. Above the human are the six devas. Above the six devas are the sixteen brahma realm. Uh, above this will be the sixteen brahma realm. So this is the rupa loka. Uh, a realm for form and fine material realm. So these are the 16 Brahma realms, which is believed that the meditators, you know, they are reborn in this one of these realms, uh, depending on their, 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 their practice, depending on their spirit, their, their, then, then they will be reborn here. Lah, uh. So these are, the, these are called the 16 uh, Brahma realms. Uh, this is called the fine material realm. So they also heard, you know, uh, so after this, this Bhuman, after this, this, this Devas heard the Dhamma, they're so happy, they say sadhu, 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 then they went up from level to level. Uh, uh. So here again, you see that all the Brahma realm also heard the teaching of the Buddha, except, except, Number 22, okay, sister, sister has shown to you. The mindless devas, the asanya sattva. Uh, this is a very strange place again. Uh, this is a place where people have body with no mind. Uh, so they also cannot benefit from the teachings of the Buddha. So the four realms, the four woeful realms cannot benefit. One more realm that cannot, that did not benefit is the mindless deva realm, the asanya sattva. So you see that when I when I show you after when we revert back to the Dhammachaka Pavatana Sutta, I will chant for you. We will go level of level and level, but we will this level is not mentioned. This level is not mentioned. Asanya, Asanya Devas are not mentioned. Brahma, they are they are also devas, but they are fine material devas, they are called Brahma. So in the Brahma realm, this realm is not mentioned. Huh? They will, we will skip this realm, they will go to uh, you see, after they go to Vihapala, they go to Aviha Deva, Atapa Deva, Sudasa Deva, Sudasi Deva, Akanipika Deva. Okay? They will skip this because they are mindless. They have no mind. They only have body. So they cannot benefit the teachings. Huh? Huh? And then you go to the four Arupa realms again. Then these four Arupa realms also has a problem. They also did not benefit the teachings. Huh? That is why you, you will remember that when the Buddha wanted to teach, wanted to share his Dhamma, first he was thinking of his first two teachers who are actually very, very highly cultivated. They can understand. It's easier to teach them. So the Buddha wanted to talk, teach them first, but the Buddha realized that they already passed away. 
Unfortunately, they are reborn in Arupa Loka. Arupa Loka means they only have consciousness without the body. Uh, they have only consciousness without body. So if you only have consciousness without the, 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 the windows or the doors to, 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 to receive things, uh, you cannot benefit. No? They got no sensual uh what they, what they call it, they got no sense door, sorry. Uh, they got no sense doors. You know, they don't have ear, they don't have eyes, they don't have nose, they don't have to, to taste, to feel, to hear. They don't have. So they cannot benefit also. So you notice that also in we will not these are not mentioned because they also cannot benefit from teachings of the Buddha. That's why I say unfortunately the two teachers are reborn there. So the Buddha could not go and teach them. Because in the Arupa realm, they are only consciousness. That is why we always say Nama Rupa. Why we always say Nama Rupa? Actually, Nama, name and body cannot be split, actually. They must be together. Uh, Nama Rupa cannot be, cannot be split. You, know? you cannot have Rupa alone. Remember, Asanya, Asanya realm is Rupa alone, no consciousness cannot benefit. Here you find that they have consciousness, you have no rupa, also cannot benefit because they don't have the five senses to benefit. Huh? They don't have the, 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 the senses, the, the sense doors to benefit the teaching. So you notice that this, so, so now we have got the first two teachers are stuck there, so wait until their karma is over, they will take a very long, long, long time and they are reborn, and hopefully that that they will benefit from teachings in the future. Otherwise, until such time, they will remain in Aloka there. Only consciousness are there. No body. Huh? And there, there are four levels there. Like, huh? Level of infinite space. The level of infinite consciousness. And the level of nothingness. And the, the final level of neither perception nor non-perception. Huh? These are more or less, I think, uh, these are more or less the Abhidhamma term. This is more for the people who meditate, you know, and these are the terms of the huh? We will not go this into detail, uh, what is the perception and non-perception. Uh, later, maybe you got some questions, we can touch and go, touch and go to this, this subject. Uh, huh? So now we go back to this. Okay, so just now I was telling you that, okay, we started with this, uh, the Bhuma Devas. Those they was living on earth one now, they interact with us all the time. So they say sadhu, 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 remember etang bhagavata bharana siyang isi patane migadaye anustarang dhamma chakkang pavatitang appativatiyang samane nava brahmane nava deve nava mare nava brahmuna vake na jiva Locas Minti. Okay, then you go to the next we go to the next slide. So uh, after the time, that, yeah. Before we go to the next one, I've got yeah. uh, three questions. Yeah. The first one when we say the earth dwelling deva, where do they belong to? <laughs> I think the earth dwelling devas are actually. They are up and down from the okay. This is an opinion as well. Huh? They are up and down from the from the uh, uh, Chatu Maharajika, lah. and they are all the, the, the three deities and all those things. Lah, you know? These are earthbound devas, lah, three deities. So we cannot say three deities don't, don't exist. Lah. The three deities, sometimes you got deities of this thing, all these funny, funny deities, these are all earthbound devas. Oh, yeah, lah, yeah, lah, yeah. These are all earthbound. Lah. Probably where they reside, where they belong to, I would think that they still belong to the Chatu Maharajika Deva. I think they are all there. Lah. But these Devas will spend more time on earth. Lah. Katukong and all these three deities and all that. Lah. Huh? They will spend more time on earth. Lah. Okay. Huh? Ah, this is an opinion. Lah, huh? Okay. Yeah. The second question is, uh, is the Dhamma uh, is the Dhamma there in the Deva Lokas, uh, like what we have here today in our human world? Uh, we have the suttas and all that. Yes. Yes. Uh, is it available in the in the Deva's plane? 
Okay. The, the, okay. This is an opinion again, huh? because you see, in the Deva realm, there's a lot of enjoyment there, a lot of happiness there. Correct? That's why sometimes we say that these devas can we cannot be uh, you cannot be enlightened from through the deva realm. No, not say cannot, lah, very rarely you can lah. So okay, why? Because their life is all pleasant, life is all happiness there. If you do not have suffering, what is there to realize? You know, the Buddha's uh, main aim to, to, to leave home is to find solution to overcome suffering. Yeah? And suffering exists in all this realm. Huh? Don't forget, huh? even Deva realm still got suffering. Uh, Brahma realm also got everywhere they have suffering because they still have got the feeling. They still have got ego there. They still quarrel there. Yeah? So, the teachings there, okay, what we believe now is like that. Huh? When we do our chanting, that is why we do our chanting and then we believe that as we do our chanting and as we are talking now, there will be there'll be a lot of devas around us listening, you know. That is the benefit for them. There, they don't do that anymore. That life is so conducive. Everybody is enjoying life. Nobody wants to listen to all this. So when, when we do this, there will be lots of devas that surrounding us trying to listen. And then when we share Marie's to them, what do you mean by sharing Marie's to them? They are all powerful devas are richer than us in the in, in, in our mundane sense. Lah, huh? they, are, they are actually richer than us. Lah. What are we sharing with them? Okay, but the meaning of sharing Marie's to them is when we share Marie's to them and when we chant, we hope that they will realize impermanence. You know? When they see that, oh, yeah, true one, these fellows are talking like that. Lah. Oh, yeah, but they have to be more careful. That my life as a deva is also not permanent. Otherwise, they think that their life as a deva is permanent. They just enjoy life, enjoy life until they just diminish. La. They, no, they, the, only, the, 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 the only good thing about deva life is my God. Yeah. they don't grow old, they don't fall sick, and, and you know, and they don't die like we die. La. But they are reborn instantaneously. Yeah? Suddenly they appear. And then when the time is up, suddenly they will disappear. Okay, and that is life of the deva. So they don't go through like us, whereby we are womb born. That's why we say we are womb born. We are born, we grow old, we fall sick, and we will die. For them, they still die uh, in, the, uh, in short, uh, but they don't suffer, uh, dying. Uh. And they are born, they are born instantaneously as an adult. There's no baby devas. They are born instantaneously, suddenly, chuk, I appear there. Uh. And then when my good karma is all over, I will just be missing for uh, suddenly lah. and then I'll be reborn in somewhere maybe in hell lah, but that is following my bad karma lah. you know uh, so that is life of the deva lah. so there is no teachings there in short lah. so when we do our chanting we dedicate marriage to them we hope that they will listen to this kind of discussion that we do and then when we share marriage with them we hope that they will realize in permanence our 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 aspiration is for them there. When you enjoy life, please remember that life is not permanent there. You know, because the, the life is so conducive, they forget about impermanence. Or not. They think that it's permanent already, you know, enjoy every day. You know. huh? So that is how they benefit from our maritra. How do they benefit? We say, because they cannot benefit, man. You know, they are so powerful up there. How can we share marit? But the meaning is. We share them, but it's for them to realize impermanence. Then they will become, ah, I better do continue to do good things so that they can continue their good life. Lah. Maybe or they will, they, will, they, will, they will disappear and reborn in a better place. Lah. Uh, so it does not mean that Devaram is all, all good all the time. Lah. And why do I say that they still quarrel? Okay. I say that, yes, their feelings, their ego, that they still quarrel. Yes, because in Tava things are heaven. Example, uh, huh? we have Azuras. Huh? These are the different Azuras than the, the, the plane that we talk about. Huh? The Azuras are also living in Tawa Tingsa heaven. But because they enjoy too much life, they always drink and drink in Mabo, wine woman and song all the time. Huh? You know, and misbehaving themselves in Tawa Tingsa heaven. That Chi Kong and the other gods, Tabli Tahan, huh? they say these people all shouldn't be living here. Huh? You know, no... Moral values, no nothing, lah, you know. So they chase them out, lah. 
So that's why they are enemies of King Kong and the other four kings. Yeah, so Azuras are always trying to, always fighting with, 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 with the uh, Devas in Tabatik Sahaban, wanting to go back to their home now, wanting to go back to their place now, because they've been kicked out of that Tabatik Sahaban because of their misbehavior. Uh, and this story you can hear also, if you, if you, learn, if you read through the, the Jaga Sutta, it is stated there. Uh, that, that the devas are also fighting there. Uh, so devas does not mean that they, they have overcome greed, hatred, delusion yet. Uh, they do, have not overcome. When you have overcome greed, hatred, delusion, you are an arahant already. You will not be any in any of the 31 planes. Uh, so as long as you belong to the 31 planes, you still have greed, you still have hatred, you still have delusion. Except that maybe it's reduced to a lot. Lah. Right? It, it has been reduced. Lah. Maybe we, we feel more greed, we feel more hatred, we, we are more deluded than them. Lah. But they still have not completely over, overcome greed, hatred, delusion. They still have this. Huh? So they must continue. Like this. We hope that when we share marriage with them, they will realize this that their life there is not permanent and they will continue to pursue whatever there is there. Lah. And I'm not sure lah, whatever there is there, what is the pursuit? Huh? They will, must pursue the Dhamma until they, huh? they must overcome the hatred illusion. Lah. Okay, Brachoy, Ken? Okay, so final question. I'm sorry, everyone. Huh? <laughs> Monopolizing this session. Huh? Why, why was it that the Deva declared that the Wheel of Dhamma that has been set forth by the Dhamma cannot be stopped by any Brahma, Deva, ascetic, Mara, or whatever. When the Buddha himself predicted that it will, uh, so Dhamma will, will disappear after 500 years. Ah, that is a very okay. Okay, now this 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 declaration is actually can we go back to to. Uh, the, the previous slide, uh, sister, maybe previous slide has some answers to that, you know, okay, can I have the previous slide, sister? No, no, the 28. No, uh, wait, standard 28, huh? Okay, okay. Ah, okay. Okay, we try 27 and see what it says. 27. Actually, the Buddha declared that this cannot be stopped, you know. Not them, you know. Huh? They are repeating what the Buddha says, actually. Lah, huh? I am not mistaken. Lah. It's the Buddha who declared that once his will, his will uh, the will of Dhamma has been set in motion, nobody can stop it. Okay, now your question is, the question again is, it, uh, it will be destroyed one day, isn't it? The question is, if, uh, why yeah. did the Deva uh, de uh, mention this? Ah. When the Buddha himself did, predict that the Dhamma will disappear after 500 years. Yes, because we must, we must agree that, that, that number one, the, Buddha, the Devas are not fully enlightened first. And that as far as Buddhism goes, nothing is permanent, brother. The three universal law of Anicca, impermanence, Dukkha, and not self. So nothing is permanent, huh? Okay. So okay, uh, okay. What he says here is sabbe. Uh, let me try to remember the word. Uh, sabbe, uh, dukkha. All transient things, all conditioned things are impermanent. Okay. Sabbe sankara. Okay. Okay. I know. I know. I know. I remember. Okay. Sabbe sankara anicca. The Buddha says, uh, all conditioned things are impermanent. And this is also Sankara. Okay, these are conditioned things. Huh? Okay, Sabbe Sankara Anicca, Sabbe Sankara Dukkha. Okay, okay, and again the Buddha says, is all conditioned things are suffering. Right? Look, this is the three universal laws. Lah. And last, the Buddha says, Sabbe Dhamma Anatta. Sabbe Dhamma Anatta. Why the Buddha say Sankara, Sankara and Dhamma? Nah? Because these are conditioned, conditioned. And the Dhamma means even conditioned and unconditioned things are also not self. Huh? 
Okay, so there from there we know that this is not permanent. Lah. Everything in the world is not permanent. Except, that's why the Buddha says, except things. These are all conditioned things. The unconditioned things are what? Nibbana. That doesn't sub, is not subjected to conditions. Lah. Uh, so, so also sabbe dhamma anatta, but that also is not self lah. The Buddha says lah. So sabbe sankara anicca, sabbe sankara dukkha, sabbe dhamma anatta. Okay, something I remember. Okay, brother. So all things are impermanent, definitely. Now the devas are not enlightened. They cannot see things like that. Uh, they still, they still have the ignorance in them lah. Don't forget lah. If you remove greed, hatred, and delusion or ignorance, then you are enlightened. But the devas are not enlightened. So we must accept that the devas are not enlightened. So that's why they can declare this. Huh? Okay, brother. Did I confuse you? Okay. <laughs> brother Tan. Okay. Uh, did I confuse you? Sorry, sorry. Get no, no, no. Brother uh, Tan, can I add something? Yes, yes, please. Okay, uh, the paragraph here reads, uh, which cannot be stopped by any ascetic or Brahmin or Deva, cannot be stopped. There are two versions of interpretation. Okay. One version is the Dhamma that is expounded by the Buddha, not cannot be stopped, which is expounded by the Buddha. Another uh, interpretation is the it is set by the Buddha. So it's not uh, here is called cannot be stopped. Actually, it is only the Buddha could expound this Chakapavatana or set in motion only by the Blessed One. Nobody else can do, not even the ascetic, not even the Brahma. Not even the deva, only yes. the blessed one. So yes. it cannot be stopped. This phrase can be also interpreted as two versions I've read is expounded, and the other one is set. Yes. That means set is like expounded. That means he has declared. Nobody else can declare except the Buddha because he is the perfectly enlightened one. Yes. Uh, okay, bro. Thank you very much. Huh? Uh, thank you very much. I think that was, that, that was very clear. Uh, yeah, it reminds me. If we were to revisit this earlier, yes. As I've said, the Buddha said that once he set this in motion, yes, you, you are putting that part. Yes, agree. The Buddha has said that once he set this in motion, nobody can stop it. Lah. But of course, he can die a natural death. Lah. But nobody can stop it. means nobody can stop the spread of the Dhamma. Lah. Huh, brother? Huh? Huh? Yes, the Buddha did say that earlier. In, in the earlier stanzas, if you go back, huh, we, we, we revisit the earlier stanzas, the Buddha did say that once he set his will in motion, nobody can stop. Yeah, But of course, like we say, see, the three universal laws still apply. Correct? The three universal laws still apply because this is, like, like, like we say, that the law of impermanence applies to everything in the world whether physical, spiritual, or anything. They, as long as they are sankaras, they are all anicca. Huh? Sankaras means conditioned things. Remember, sabbe sankara anicca. That is the word the Buddha used. Huh? Sabbe sankara anicca means all conditioned things, all things with condition, all things that are here based on conditions are all not permanent. That's why the last one the Buddhas use is Sabbe Dhamma Anatta. That means all conditioned and unconditioned things are also not self. Okay? That means Nibbana is also not self. Huh? In other words, lah. When, when the Buddha uses the word Dhamma, that means it includes conditioned and unconditioned things. Uh, that, that means unconditioned things are the things that is Nibbana is unconditioned. That is also not self. Uh, so these three universal laws apply. Uh, these universal laws apply to everything. is spiritual, physical, all applies. 
So how it will be stopped, we do not know. Like die, you will die a natural death because everything is, is, it is definitely... Actually, how we will stop, you know, if you want to know, uh, the Buddha has predicted how he will stop, la, you know, but it's a very long story also. La. It will stop by people who will distort the teachings of the Buddha. Huh? You see, uh, sometimes we worry also, la, you know, many people are giving a lot of talks and then they, they interpret a lot of things themselves, la, yeah? you know, and then you, you, you hear of those secular kind of... Uh, meditation, secular kind of mindfulness coming out. A lot of us are using the Buddha's teaching, removing the Dhamma there, you know. Huh? So when this gets distorted one day, eventually the Dhamma will be destroyed. Huh? The Dhamma will be destroyed because of distortion. Huh? That one day, the Buddha has declared, that one day, somebody with this kind of, you know, this five-colored thread on the, on, the, on the wrist will declare that he is also a, a monk, huh? he is also a bhikkhu. Huh? Uh, to that level, uh, one day it will happen. Uh, uh, so everybody, it is because of the distortion from the people. Everybody will want to interpret the teaching that way. Uh, so that is why some, we must always discuss basing on the sutta so that we don't deviate too much. Uh, unfortunately, we all do not know Pali so well. So we rely on, on commentaries. Uh, commentaries means the interpretation and all those things, and people add in a lot, lah, the commentaries. Lah, huh? Huh? So, so if the commentaries get carried away, you know, and, and, and the commentaries you are reading is maybe sub-commentaries. Sub you know? So if you are not careful, this is how the Dhamma is destroyed. The Dhamma is destroyed by distortion. Huh? That one day, everybody will claim that they are already gurus. Lah. So that is how it is destroyed. Huh? So, so the Buddha has described this in detail, la, how the Dhamma will be destroyed also, la, uh, when it is distorted all the time. La. It slowly gets distorted. La. You know, like, like some people are asking me a lot of things, why, why some people say the Buddha never see, will never see the foresight, why people say this, never, you know, something like that. La, you know? So everybody will start, maybe they are right, so, but maybe they are learning wrong things, they do not know, see? but eventually it will be, it will be destroyed. La. Destroyed means maybe destroyed by us. Uh, people like us will be fighting over the interpretation. Uh, okay, so that's where my chair will come down. Uh, when, the, when, when it is completely destroyed, then there's the dark ages. Uh. Dark ages does not mean that people are, have no education. Uh. Dark ages means we are reverting to a lot of old kind of rituals and you know, doing silly things in life. Uh. Uh, you know? We buy pie under trees, we buy pie to the mountain, we buy pie to everything. Those are called the dark ages. La. Not necessarily that we become barbarians, la. not necessarily. La. Dark ages could mean that everybody becomes so scientific that they don't want to practice Dharma anymore. La. <laughs> so those are also called dark ages. La. Uh, we become too clever for the Dharma. Really, uh, that's when it's completely lost. Nobody remembers the Four Noble Truth anymore. You know, uh, then, then only Maitreya will appear. Uh, and then the Buddha, yes, the Buddha did say that maybe uh, there were no interpretation. I mean, that's not going to be like sometimes. The, sometimes they say that even you know, if if ladies are ordained, the Buddha says that then the 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 dhamma won't last that long or so on, isn't it? So okay, Let, let's not worry about such things. Let us quickly try to realize the four noble truth and 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 get out of samsara first. Uh. I think that it should be our target, like get out of samsara quickly. True understanding of the Four Noble Truth. Uh, remember, the Buddha says you must understand the Four Noble Truth in the twelve modes, and know, practice, realize. Okay, and you practice, know, practice, realize. Then, you, once you've understood that there is suffering, and you penetrate the suffering, and you overcome suffering, then you are there. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you for the question, brother, brother Kevin. Thank you for the additional explanation. Yeah. Okay, you can interrupt us anytime. Like, it's very interesting to talk like that, like, actually. But, but, but again, like, let me let, me, let us let us qualify ourselves. Like, we are just this is just a friendly discussion. We are not saying that our views are hundred percent. Uh, maybe people have other views. We can still listen, and then we will. Like, we will see which is which is more. Which one makes more sense? Uh, you know, you practice what the one that makes sense to us. Uh.
Huh? Okay, so we go to the next slide, sister. After this, so now this is Chatu Maharajika. I think this is the first one. Huh? Bhuma nang deva nang sadang sutwa Chatu Maharajika deva Sadha manusa vesum Then they start again. Etang Bhagavata Baranasi. Yang this time you want to repeat lah. Huh? We will just remember that now they have gone these these teachings that the Chatu Maharaja Kadeva is also actually rejoicing in these teachings. And they heard that the Buddha has expounded these teachings. They were also very excited. They also, they also rejoiced. So that's all it's trying to say. The 31 planes have benefited. Now we will go to Chatu Maharajika. And then Chatu Maharajika, then they go to Tava Tingsa. Remember, you know, Sister, Sister Sumitra has shown us the chart. Then he went to uh, Tava Tingsa, then he go to Yamadeva, isn't it? Huh? So this Chatu Maharajika Nang, Chatu Maharajika Nang, Deva Nang, Sadam Sutwa, Tava Tingsa, Deva, Sadamanu Savesum. Then this is Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Huh? So after Chatu Maharajika, he went over to Tavatingsa. They heard and they also rejoiced. Huh? Okay, then Chatu Maharajika. Okay, now here. Then after Tavatingsa, I explained you now. From the chart, we saw some of Tavatingsa Devas. When they heard about it, they too rejoiced. And the Yama Devas heard, they also rejoiced. Huh? So he goes to Yama Deva. Here he says, Tavatingsa Nang Deva Nang Satang Sutwa. Yama Deva Sattamanu Savesum. Okay. So the Yama Deva also rejoice and it continues. Okay, sister, next slide. This one. Okay, then it continues to it continues. Then we can just we can just skip. Okay, we have explained to you just now. Like, it went all the way up to the 27th level. Huh? He didn't go to 28, 29, 30, 31 because those are Arupa realm. Arupa realm, we say that they cannot benefit because they have got no faculties to benefit. Uh, only mind alone, they do not have the faculties to benefit. Yeah. So that we have covered. I'm, I'm going a bit too fast because uh, maybe for interest of time. Lah. So, okay, so that, never mind, we can, we, can, we can go back to your chart on the 31 planes. Okay, so we have gone through that they, okay, now this is the Kama Loka, just now we say the Kama Loka, uh, and then he has gone through to the Brahma, then he goes to Brahma, uh, and then he will, okay, these demons, uh, demons will not benefit. Uh, okay, uh, 31, someone says, uh, next one. Okay, okay, here, okay, okay, here, here, okay. So the, okay, so now we have covered all this, uh, we have gone to this, 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 uh, Kama Dukati Dukati Bhumi. Eh? So this is called the Apaya realm, which cannot benefit. Then he went up to the Deva realm. The seven realms that can benefit, and they go to the 16 realms. 16 realms they can benefit, but one of the 16 realms did not benefit. Okay, don't forget that Asanya, Asanya Devas did not benefit. Eh? So only benefited the seven plus 15, 22 realms. Eh? Okay, the others couldn't benefit because, like we say, body without mind also no point. Mind without body also no point. So mind and body cannot be disintegrated actually. Yeah. So the minute when we die, in short, I uh, you see when we say mind and body cannot be split, means the minute when we die, that means the second or the split second when we die, it will be, it will find another body immediately. You know, otherwise, the consciousness cannot do anything. What? Uh, consciousness alone is floating, floating, it doesn't do anything. It has no faculties to listen, to, to hear, to feel, nothing, nothing. It cannot feel nothing. So that's why in, in Theravada Buddhist, we say that the rebirth is immediate. Lah, basing on this fact. Lah, uh, that you see, asanya, asanya Rupa cannot benefit because the body is there, no mind. Arupa Loka, mind is there, no body, so cannot benefit. Okay, so with that, I think we would have completed our Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta. Huh? For the interest of time, now we have made it a bit short. 
Did I, did I confuse anybody? No. Huh? So we will continue the journey now huh? after he has finished. Okay. So we will continue our journey huh? after the Buddha has. So after that five, huh? after the first five disciples, huh? the first disciple was Pondanya, of course. Lah, huh? Then the Buddha met Yasa. Huh? Okay. Yasa also after his first sermon. I, I, you can read, lah. after his first sermon, the Buddha first laid his convert was Yasa. Who was Yasa? He was the son of a wealthy money lender who, like the Buddha, sought more than life of luxury than he has been born to. Uh, he also did not enjoy his life of luxury. You know, huh? He left home and the Buddha accepted him into the order. So he left home and then the Buddha took him to the order. Then later he invited his 54 friends to join. Okay, this is the first big group that the Buddha has, for the first 60. When people always quote the first 60, who are the first 60? First 60 disciples of the Buddha are the first five, plus Yasa and his 54 friends. That means 55 of them. Lah. So these make the first 60. Okay, these are the first 60 disciples that the Buddha had. Huh? And also you know that Yasa's father and mother... Uh, Yasa's father and mother were, were uh, former, uh, sorry, Yasa's father, his mother and former wife offering arms to the Buddha and Yasa's mother and former wife became the first two female followers. Uh, those days, the ladies cannot learn any Dhamma, you know. Uh, they cannot learn any religion those days. Huh? But the Buddha accepted these first two, like the first followers. Huh? Okay, so that's why we say that the Buddha is a woman liberator. See? He liberated women, like he accepted women to learn and all those things. Huh? And he accepted them to be in his order also. Huh? You know, his stepmother, uh, his auntie or his stepmother became a nun. Huh? So, 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 so the Buddha is actually a woman liberator. Huh? In short, in short, huh? Okay, then this is the Buddha and his first 60 disciples. Huh? I've explained to you where are the 60 disciples coming from. Huh? First five. And then Yasa and 54 friends. So these make up the 60 people. Correct? These make up the 60 people. Okay? So now Yasa and his 54 friends, the Buddha have 60 followers. Correct? Just two months after enlightenment, you know. So with 60 Arahans. Huh? See, the Buddha taught them and all became Arahans. Huh? An ideal number to propagate the Dhamma. What is the most popular part the Buddha says here is this is being quoted and, and, and re-quoted many times. Go forth, O bhikkhus, for the good of the many, for the happiness of the many, out of compassion for the world, for the good benefit and happiness of gods and men. Let not two go by one way. Preach, O bhikkhus, the Dhamma, excellent in the beginning. Excellent in the middle, excellent in the end, both in spirit and in the latter. There are beings with little eyes, little dust in their eyes, who, not hearing the Dhamma, will fall away. There will be those who understand the Dhamma. Okay, what is important here, I want to discuss here, you know. Okay, this is a very popular, popular statement. Go forth, O Bhikkhus. Can you see, uh, I will just talk about you uh, for the happiness of the many, out of compassion to the world, for the good and benefit and happiness of God and men. Okay? So here you know uh, that sometimes we say the Buddha is the teacher of God and men. Remember? The qualities of the Buddha, we say, is the teacher of God and men. So the Buddha says here, go, go for the good of, of the many, including the gods and all the men will benefit in this teaching. Huh? And then the Buddha says, okay, let no two men go by one way. Uh, the Buddha says, uh, preach, okay, let no two men. You see, this is how the Buddha, you uh, see, we, sometimes we say that the Buddha is a good human resource manager. Also, uh, you see, he got 60. He said, all 60 go different way. No two men should go by the same way. Uh. He doesn't want to waste the resources. Uh. Uh, he doesn't want to waste the resources. So preach all because the Dhamma excellent in the beginning. Uh, this one we can discuss. Uh. Okay, what do you mean by Preach, oh, because the Dhamma excellent in the beginning, 
excellent in the middle, excellent in the end, both in spirit and in letter. Yeah. What can we understand when, okay, this is my own interpretation again. Now what can we understand by excellent in the beginning, excellent in the middle, excellent in the end. Okay, can somebody try and say what do you mean by this excellent in the beginning, excellent in the end? Okay, I put it in red now. Can anybody wants to explain to us what does the Buddha, I mean, your own ideas, like how we, this is this is an open discussion, so we can, you know, among, among friends, I say. So preach, oh, because the Dhamma, excellent in the beginning, excellent in the middle, excellent in the end. What do you mean by that, you know? Okay, can, can somebody try to explain what is the meaning of this, good in the beginning, good in the middle, good in the end? Excellent in the beginning. Can somebody try? Okay, let me try, Brother Tan. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, I understand it as uh, good. Uh, excellent in the beginning is when you first hear the Dharma uh, to certain people. Uh, uh, you will find that the Dharma is wonderful. What the Buddha thought is uh, something that makes sense, relevant to the whatever situation you are in. So for the first time to hear it, uh, it makes sense and it probably can change their view. Excellent in the middle is when you have learned the Dhamma and you're practicing it, you find that the Dhamma has got depth and you, 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 you can progress along it uh, as the teaching goes deeper and deeper. And excellent in the end is that when you realize, you find that Nibbana is so blissful, so nice. So that's why it's excellent in the beginning, excellent in the middle, and excellent in the in the end. That's what I think it is. Yeah, I think you 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 are. That was very good, brother. That was that was excellent, huh? So so, brother Kevin, you want to add in? You want to add something? That was very good, brother. Huh? That, that is yeah. It, it really means that. Yes, yes. Yeah. The, the Buddha declared that he only teaches two things. First is, he bring out this subject as suffering. And suffering is not permanent, but it can be taken away. That is called cessations of suffering. So excellent in the beginning is that he the Blessed One has given the true knowledge, accurate assessment as how one person can get away and get liberated. Excellent in the middle is he has shown the pathway, the Noble Eightfold Path for you to be liberated, liberated if you follow diligently life after life. And finally, excellent in the end, you will achieve liberation you don't go into suffering anymore thanks okay thank you so much that was also very accurate lah. anybody else want to add or think of that anybody okay that okay both of you have actually given us a very very clear understanding of what it means by 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 excellent in the beginning excellent in the middle and excellent in the end huh? So, okay, if you summarize both of you, what you all have said is, I would have, I would summarize this way. Lah, huh? What you all both are trying to say also is like that. Uh, Brother, Brother Choi has said it very clearly also, excellent in the beginning is also good for those people who are beginners. Yeah, yeah people who are beginners. Who are, okay, then, then Brother Kevin is saying that people who understand suffering is not permanent. Lah. Okay, so good in the beginning means it is also good for beginners, correct? In short, huh? so I will summarize both of you to combine our good for beginners for who just started. This is also excellent. Don't mean that you are beginner, you cannot enjoy so much anything. Oh, that fellow is more advanced and he enjoys more. No, the Buddha says beginners can also enjoy as much as the middle people and the end people. They're excellent in the beginning. Don't worry. Beginners will find it very, very excellent. Okay? 
does not mean that you are beginners, you are far away, you take a long time to catch up with me, not true at all. Beginners can understand the Dhamma as excellent as I can understand the Dhamma. That's what the Buddha will mean. Lah. Beginners also can, can enjoy the Dhamma. Excellent in the beginning. And for those people who have already learned the Dhamma, uh, maybe they read more books than us, they are more a bit more better practitioners, experienced practitioners, they are also excellent. They can also enjoy the Dhamma as much as the beginners can enjoy. Does not mean that the beginners cannot enjoy as much as you enjoy. I don't think so. That is again personal. It is again my view. Lah, huh? So it is good for the beginners. She can enjoy it as much as even I have studied a bit more. I also can enjoy. But doesn't mean I enjoy more, you know. We both can enjoy the same level of happiness. It is excellent for you, it can be excellent for me. Does not mean that you must be an, you must be advanced practitioner to enjoy more, to understand more. Not true. Beginners can understand and enjoy to the maximum. People who have practiced and understood it a little bit can also enjoy and understand. And also those advanced practitioners, ascetics, maybe meditators, or maybe uh, they can also enjoy as much as we can enjoy. That is what I, I feel. So what I'm trying to say, there is no distinction between beginners and middle practitioners and advanced practitioners. To me, all three can enjoy and realize the Dhamma equally as good as each other. Right? That's not mean that beginners will, will, will be left out. You will not understand. I understand better than you. Not true. Lah, huh? That is how I, I will interpret also lah, that way. Lah. Okay? Uh, that is good for beginners, it is good for even middle practitioners, good for even advanced practitioners. All three can benefit the teachings of the Buddha equally as well. Does not leave you out. You are just beginner, you cannot enjoy so much. I will enjoy, I will understand more. No. It is good in the beginning, good for the beginners, good for the middle practitioners. They also will enjoy excellence and also good for the advanced practitioners. They also can enjoy excellence. Huh? I think I combine both of what you both are trying to say. I think I will come to that conclusion. Uh, okay. Uh, Brother Tan, can yeah. we go to the last slide? Yeah. Which last line? Which one? The previous one. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, after preach O Bikus, the Dhamma excellent in the beginning, excellent in the middle, right? Yeah. I think that the last state, the statement that follow was very, very important. Yeah. He, the blessed one, stated, there are beings with little dust in their eyes. Yes. Who, not hearing the Dhamma, will fall away. Yes. There will be those who understand the Dhamma. So, the blessed one also know there are people who have little dust some completely cannot understand Dhamma. There was yeah. one, I think, a monk, I think his name is Supaka, I think. He met yeah. the Buddha and the Buddha explained to him, then he just shake his head and then he walked away. Yes. So, when, when brother mentioned that there are people, even we are beginner, we can understand, is because the many lives before us, we have been cultivating. So therefore, we have little dust we can understand faster or easier. But yes. there are also people who have rejected Buddhism. And uh, when they come to this world, when they hear about uh, Dharma, oh, this is not the teaching. So these are the ones that has a lot of dust in their eyes. And how much you want to polish it, it will not go away. And this is what I understand yes. from here. Yes, yes, you have given the, the example of Upakala. I'm trying to get the slide now. Ah, yes. You see, when the Buddha was walking, also he met one ascetic, la, advanced practitioner, la, what you say, la, isn't it? Nah? You know, that, that's what you say, la, ah, this is the one, la, huh? ascetic Upakala, this is the one. La. So he's also an advanced ascetic, you see, but he did not benefit, correct? 
That's exactly yeah. what you said, lah. I guess very, very, very good, brother. Ah, huh? so this is the one that you, that brother. Okay, brother Kevin is trying to say this one, lah. Ah, huh? he's he's quoting this this stanza. He remember this stanza, aesthetic upaka, pure and clean is a complexion. On account of whom has your renunciation been made, friend? Who is your teacher? What whose doctrine do you profess? You see, all of them are learning from people. See, when the Buddha says that. All have I overcome. All do I know. From all am I detached. All have I renounced. Wholly absorbed an I in the destruction of craving. This Aranship. Having comprehended all by myself. Whom shall I call my teacher? No teacher of I. So this poor fellow cannot understand. You see? Even if an advanced practitioner sometimes don't understand. He should be said he go away. Lah. He wasted the chance of being enlightened by the Buddha. Right, that's not Brother Kevin. He's, he's quoting this one, huh? Thank you very much, Brother Kevin, huh? No. Uh, so this is the one, huh? And equal to me, there is not. The Buddha said, there's nobody equal to him. In the world, including gods, there is no rival to me. Indeed, an arhan am I in this world. An unsurpassed teacher am I. Alone am I. The all enlightened food and the peace am I. Establish the will of the Dhamma to the city of Kasi, I go. In this blind world, I shall beat the drum of deathlessness. But this poor fellow did not understand what the Buddha is trying to say. So a new practitioner also could understand. But this poor fellow, advanced practitioner, cannot understand. That's what we are trying to say. Very good, Kevin. So, to, okay, to add yes, this. this one we have covered during the earlier days. Huh? During lesson one or two, I think we covered this part, isn't it? To add to this incident, uh, ah. where Upaka went away after hearing what the Buddha had said, and uh, the Buddha also felt, finally he felt, the way he approached this subject is like the other person think that this Buddha, this person has very big ego. Everything is about him. He has no other teacher. And he's talking about all this. No teacher have I. Mm. And equal to me, there is no, not one. In this world, including gods, no rival to me. So Upaka was thinking that this person I'm talking to got big ego. So I'm not going to listen to him. So he walked away. So yeah. when, when the Buddha realized that the way he approached, therefore, in the Dhamma Chaka Pavatana, when he explained to the five disciples, he started with the actual teaching, suffering, origin of suffering, cessation of suffering, and therefore realization of Nibbana. So when okay. this subject was brought to the five disciples, they could clearly understand this was never heard before, never been taught before, never been written anywhere else. So this was the right approach. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Brother Kevin. That was very true. Huh? So, Brother Kevin is trying to say that, okay, this may, okay, this is again, it is uh, written by commentaries. Lah, huh? These are all commentaries. Maybe they did not choose the correct words. Lah. But nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, don't forget, uh, when the Buddha was enlightened, uh, he, did, he did actually contemplate on where he should spend time, you know. He did use his psychic eye and, 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 and roam the world and see where is there a teacher equal to him so that he can spend time together and discuss things together. Lah. But he could not find any. Lah. And this is because he has contemplated. Lah. Yes, you said that this also appears to be like ego, lah, but because this is written in English, maybe. Lah. But Buddha has contemplated on where to spend, with whom shall he spend his enlightened years. You know? But he couldn't find anybody. Uh, so that's why he said that also. Uh, okay, very good, Brother Kevin. Uh. Okay. I really pick up some of the in, in incidences that, I mean, that is a bit interesting for you all. Uh. So along the way, again, uh, the Buddhas went and they saw a group of 30 young men, you know. They all brought their wives to the forest to enjoy themselves. Uh. But, there's another, but there's a young man there who is not married, you see. So he, he, he hired a... a a courtesan to go with him. So, nah, all the friends brought wife. You got no wife. Ma. You can hire one. Nah. He hired one courtesan and go. Nah. So, and then while they were enjoying themselves, they were tired, they were resting. When the young man got up 
and he found that his, 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 his variables were missing, you know. That Quattersen took his things and chabot, lah, you know. He, he was running, looking for the woman now. Where did the woman go? Lah, you know? Where did the woman absconded with all his variables? Lah? Then the young man saw the Buddha in the forest and asked him, lah, this is the this is the tagline. Lah. So at that time, 30 young men went with, with their wives to the particular grove to amuse themselves. As one of them had no wife, he took with him a courtesan. While they were enjoying themselves, this woman absconded with their valuables. The young man searched for her in the forest and seeing the Buddha, inquired of him whether he saw a young woman passing that way, which the Buddha says. So the Buddha replied, huh? they asked the Buddha, do you see a young woman passing this way? Huh? The Buddha says, which do you think young man is better? Seeking a woman or seeking oneself? Okay, so this is a tagline. Huh? So remember the Buddha says, which is better, huh? seeking a woman or seeking yourself? See? So this is a tagline. So, then seeking oneself is better, O oh Lord, replied the young man. They know, they realize, oh yeah, seeking oneself is better. Correct. Well then, sit down, I shall preach the doctrine to you, said the Buddha. Very well, Lord, they replied, and respectfully saluting the exalted one step expectantly by. Okay? So they sat there, and they attentively listened to the Buddha and obtained the eye of, tr eye of truth. After this, they entered the order and received the higher ordination. So that's how Buddha managed to get around 30 followers, you know. Huh? By saying that which you think is better, seeking the woman or seeking oneself. We are always looking for people, looking for external things. Internal, internal, look internally. Lah. That's what the Buddha is trying to say. Lah, huh? Okay? And then, okay, this one we will just, we will touch on the sutta next week. Huh? We will just cover up with this Okay, any questions after that? No, huh? Okay, then the conversion of the Kasapa brothers. Okay, uh, we shall only finish this part. Huh? Okay, so the Buddha went to Uruvela. Huh? Uruvela, okay, so I will read for you first and then we will discuss. Huh? Conversion of the three Kasapa brothers. Wandering from place to place, the Buddha arrived at Uruvela. Uruvela. Here live three Jalitas, ascetic with method hand, known as Uruvela Kasapa, Nadi Kasapa, Gaya Kasapa. So there, they are method hair. You know, those all special, specially method hair ascetics. Huh? They are very powerful. Huh? These three brothers are very well known. Huh? Uruvela Kasapa, Nadi Kasapa, and Gaya Kasapa. So they were all brothers living separately with 500 300 and 200 disciples, respectively. Uh, the eldest was very proud of his own spiritual attainment and always thought that he was an Arahant. The eldest got 500 followers. He thinks he's an Arahant. He's a very powerful Arahant, you know. Uh, so the Buddha approached him first and sought permission to spend the night in this fire chamber where a fierce serpent king was staying, you know, in the fire chamber. They are fire worshippers. Huh? So by his psychic power, oh, this is a bit short. Okay, okay then I read through, then I will explain it. Huh? So by his psychic power, the Buddha subdued the serpent. This appeased Uruvela Kasapa and invited the Buddha to stay there as his guest. The Buddha was compelled to exhibit his psychic power on several occasions to impress the ascetic, but still adhered to the belief that the Buddha was not an Arahan and he was. Okay, so the Buddha compelled to exhibit his psychic power on several other occasions to impress the ascetic, huh? but still the belief, but still he adhered to the belief that the Buddha was not an arahant. Huh? So finally, the Buddha was able to convince him and he was that uh, that he was an arahant. Okay, therefore he and his followers entered the order and obtained and obtained the higher ordination. His brothers and his followers followed his example, accompanied by the three Kasapa brothers and the there are thousand followers, huh? and the Buddha repaired to Gaya Sisa, not far from Uruvela. Here he preached the Adit Aditta Pariyaya Sutta, hearing which all attain Aranship. Okay, what he says here is the Buddha went to Uruvela because he knows that there are three very popular, very 
Jalita as a thick sun, the method has the thick sun called Kasapal, Nadi, and Gaya. These three are brothers, huh? they have got 500, 300, 300 disciples. So the Buddha asked for permission to stay there. You know? He wants to stay in the higher chamber. Huh? So the Buddha got permission to stay in the higher chamber. But the but actually Uruvela Kasper did not agree. You know, he says it's very dangerous. You know? There's a very fierce serpent there. You stay there, you will be killed, you know. But the Buddha asked him for three times, then eventually he said, okay, well, you want to stay, you stay there. Huh? So they stayed there. Lah. Okay, so the Buddha stayed there at night and they thought that the Buddha would be dead in the morning. Lah. Of course, the serpent was very fierce, you know. But the Buddha managed to subdue the serpent. Okay? The Buddha subdued the serpent with his psychic power. Huh? And then in the morning when they got up, they found that the Buddha is still alive and the serpent was very timid. Okay, then he... But yet, but yet, Kasapa... Uruvela Kasapa thinks that the Buddha is not an Aranya. He thinks that, okay, like he's, he's, he maybe has that psychic power, but does not make any difference to him. Like he's still more superior. Like. So Uruvela Kasapa always thought they were superior. Although the Buddha did demonstrate small, small uh, miracles in between, like, you know, until the final day. Huh? The final day, how was Uruvela Kasapa convinced, you know? Because one day they have got a function in the village. Uh, annual function where many people will come, you know. By then, uh, by then the Buddha was uh, becoming very popular, you know. Uh, everybody knows the uh, Buddha looks so serene, he became very popular. You see? So when they had that powerful function there, so Uruvela Kasapa was a little bit concerned. He was thinking that ah yeah, tonight uh, when all the villagers come for this celebration, uh, they will spend time more with the Buddha than with me, you know. I would lose the, 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 you know, normally when they come, they always spend time with Guru Vila Kasapa. La. He was the main attraction. La. But with the Buddha there, he, he feels that he will be sidelined. So Guru Vila Kasapa wasn't happy. La. I said, Ayo, tonight I think I will be sidelined. La. The Buddha will be the main attraction. Uh, so, okay, the night came and they had that function. Guru Vila Kasapa was surprised that the Buddha didn't appear, you know. He did not attend the function, you know. So he was happy, la. Uruvela Kasapa was happy, la. the Buddha not there, he gets all the attention again. La. Then the next day, he asked the Buddha, why did you not attend the function last night? I was expecting you there. The Buddha says, but were you not worried that I will get more attention than you? Correct. Then Uruvela Kasapa realized that actually the Buddha is very powerful. He could even read his mind. Huh? So, so Uruvela Kasapa then realized that the Buddha actually is an Arahat. He could read Uruvela Kasapa's mind that he was very worried that if Buddha attended the function, that the focus would be on him. Ah, that was why he was converted. Lah. Huh? So that was why he was converted. And after that, next week we shall talk about the Adita Pariyaya Sutta. Huh? What is this Adita Pariyaya Sutta? Okay, so are there any questions? So, anybody has any questions? Does so Sydney, you have anything to say? Uh, Brother Tan, um, when just now you say that uh, some people, they are, the devas being reborn, uh, like straight away, they don't go through the womb, how do they get their identity? No, they Buddhas mistake. are not like human, you know, they are not womb-born, like we call it, like we are womb-born, most of these, okay, the sentient beings are not womb-born. Huh? Uh, mm -hmm. We, in this world, all the animals and include animals and everything is womb-born or egg-born, huh? correct? Uh, the uh, Devas suddenly mm -hmm. appear, they say. Uh, the book says that Devas suddenly appear, and then uh, suddenly you see Brother Tande, and then when my time is up, when my, 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 I visa all my karma that I have to reborn now somewhere else, suddenly I disappear. Lah. So they don't go through that, 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 that death, suffering, that part. Lah. Huh? They just appear and disappear. But that, that means do they have identity? Uh, of course, of course, of course, they have identity, yeah. But they're not born as a baby. Lah. They're not born as a baby. They don't grow old and all those things. Lah. They are just like mean, that. Mm. And then there are there are signs how they grow old. Uh. There are flowers of paint on their head and they will, they, they, their armpit will start smelling and all those things. Uh. You know, uh, those are signs that they are already going to diminish. Uh. 
Uh, it means they appear in uh, they appear in somebody's body or no 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 they appear just next to you suddenly suddenly you find that there's an extra person there suddenly yeah in the village oh. maybe ah uh, maybe ten of us live in the village suddenly too there's eleven people and then suddenly one of us or two of us will just disappear that means we 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 are gone lah yeah is that that they just appear and disappear but there are signs lah of course that the body starts smelling a bit the armpit smell and then the flowers on the head will fade and all those little things lah you know. Ah, uh, but they 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 are not born as babies, and then we train them, we send them to school. No, they are born just instantaneously, and they go off. Also, they just lost, finish. Yeah. Oh, that means they appear and disappear on their own. Yes, yes. Be oh, okay. Of course, when the karma is finished, they disappear. Lah. It's not that they want to disappear. You know, when the karma is completely used up, then they just suddenly disappear. Yeah. Oh. And that's how 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 devas appear and disappear. Lah. Or born and reborn, I can call it that way, lah. But they are not born as babies, lah. That means they don't die like how normal people die. No, they disappear mm. immediately. Mm. Uh, okay, example, lah. If they have used all the good karma, they are supposed to go to hell. Let's say, lah. Example, lah. Suddenly they just shoot, they go to hell, finish. Yeah. Oh. So, so that's why we see we transfer marriage for them to realize that life is impermanent. Then they can realize, and then they can. Continue to do good lah, and then they can continue to enjoy better life and you know prolong that 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 good life lah. Huh? Okay. What I don't understand is that is it they appear as a flash of light or as a human? No, they appear in the form. Yes, yes. In the form of human, not light, sir. I'm not sure in what form. Okay, I'm not <laughs> sure, but 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 in their form lah, they appear in their form lah, not as light. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Of course, okay. we all we all, we all just like to understand that they are they're human and handsome and pretty lah. You know that is what we like to understand lah. You know, ah, uh, since they're devas and all those things lah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thanks. Okay. Anybody else want to add or otherwise we have to call it a night lah. If there are no questions, I think we shall call it a night. We shall do our short dedication next week. We shall we shall discuss on the Aditya Pariyaya Sutta lah. Huh? Next week we will we discuss a bit on that lah, on on our faculties lah. We will discuss a bit on the on the on the on, on our faculties lah. Then we will understand better. Huh? So brothers and sisters in the Dhamma, we have spent an hour and a half. Uh, discussing on the Dhamma Chaka Pavatana Sutta on the 31 planes of existence. And during such time, I'm sure your mind stayed very focused and no unwholesome thoughts came to your mind. And when there's no unwholesome thoughts that come to our mind during such time, we accrue abundance of Maris, and these Maris will dedicate to all the gods and devas, all our protective devas. And we hope that they will rejoice in this merit and eventually attain the perfect bliss of Nibbana. And by virtue of this merit, may they continue to help us, continue to bless us with good health, longevity, success, happiness, prosperity, and above all, wisdom. Wisdom to understand the Buddha Dhamma. We must also recall to mind the names of our loved ones who are no more with us and also to all our previous ancestors whom we have never met before. We hope that these Maris can reach them and help them in their spiritual well-being if they need them. However, if they are reborn on the celestial plane, may they to rejoice in these Maris and shower unto us their choices, blessings and protection. Aspiration as always, may we be blessed with company of the good and the wise always. May we not follow the ways of the foolish. May we be blessed with good friends and good teachers who can guide us along the path of the Dhamma. Until we reach our final liberation, Nibbana. Etavata cha ammehi, Sambatang punya sampadang, Sape deva, Sape sata, Sape buta, Anumo dantu, Sape sampati sitia, Idang me nyati nang otu, Sukita hontu nyatayo, Idang me nyati nang otu, Sukita hontu nyatayo, Idang me nyati nang otu sukita hontu nyata yo imina punya kambe na mame bala samagamo satang samagamo hotu 
ಯಾವಿಬ್ಬಾನಪತಿಯಾಧು ಸಾಧು ಸಾಧು 